But with Jack Grealish, I do wonder if he actually holds them back at times. Aston Villa were a side that relied very heavily on Jack Grealish. He also needed some serious coaching. He is still outstanding every single game, even when he's not at his real best. He holds on to the ball too long. That's why he is so important to Aston Villa. Can you believe that he's actually spent the time, not just typing that out, texting it? He spent money on a text for that. Can Villa do a Leicester is the question. What you're basically saying is, no, they can't win the title. Well, they definitely won't win the title. Okay. They can't do it. I think it's a struggle for them to get top four. Is this one of those where we kept saying, Leicester can't win the title? Yeah. Leicester got to April, Leicester can't win the but title. But as I've said many times, with Everton and Villa, if one of them two win the title, or Tottenham, I'd be over the moon. Absolutely overjoyed for them. I would. I think the one thing that... Well, there's a lot of things. You look at the Aston Villa team, and I do wonder if they've got that strength in depth in midfield. Um, I think Ollie Watkins, you're right. You know, we've still got to uh, answer some questions. Defensively, they've improved amazingly. I think they've uh, got a decent keeper as well. However, I think that when you look at when you look at James Rodriguez, he fits into a position that they need him to fit into in the team, and he operates from that position. Okay, he. He's so disciplined tactically. But with Jack Grealish, I do wonder if he actually holds them back at times. Now, just hear me out on this, because you know I think he's brilliant, right? Mm -hmm. And as actually said last week, I don't think England are going to do anything unless someone like Grealish is in the side. But what he also needs is some serious coaching. Now, sometimes he just... He seems to be unaware of what he's doing, and that's okay up to a point, because it, it can be brilliant. But other times, he'll run down a dead end. These, these examples, this was at nil-nil. There was a time where a ball went across the area and it went to the far side of the area on the left. He's got the ball at his feet and for all the world, the position is, he's in and the, where the Leicester defenders are, everybody would have a shot. Everybody would have a shot on goal at that point. However, he took 11 touches and ran it out of play. There was one a few moments later where he's spearheading a three on two. Okay, so he's got to make a choice. He draws one of the defenders, passes it to one of his outside teammates. He doesn't. He carries on 12 touches of the ball and passes it to a Leicester player when there's nowhere else to go. So I'm just thinking, if you are coached in that in that moment, coached how to deal with those situations, then you're going to become an even better player than you are because there's no doubt he's incredibly talented. But I just wonder if Aston Villa and Dean Smith just let him go out there and do his thing too much. Do they need to no. not overcoach him? No, he was still their best player. They're getting that game. I'm not sure he was. He enough. was their best player in that no. game. Aid, every time he got the ball, he's looking to get a foul because of his skill, his close control with the football. He, he is still outstanding every single game, even when he's not at his real best. I think he's a fantastic footballer. Could he be even and, better, and, though? No, I think he with couldn't. them, I think with them in their team, well, of course anybody can be better. But what I'm trying to say, with him, you want him to have a free role, surely. It's like Sterling at Manchester City. You want him to have a free role. You want him to wander all over the pitch, go on the right, go on the left, go down the centre. That's why he is so important to Aston Villa. So a massive keep. And bringing Barkley in as well, yeah. who's effective going forward and creating more opportunities, you'd like to think they're the reasons that they've got to get more goals. But more, more than that, though, and, and I hear everything you're saying... I just think sometimes he holds on to the ball too long. And and there are better options. And I love him being on the ball. I love him dribbling with the ball, taking players on, committing defenders. But sometimes you have to learn when to let that ball go. Sometimes it's best not to hold on to the ball. And it's no surprise to me that the winning goal came without the intervention of Jack Grealish. Because I just think he, the more the game went on at 0-0, the more he wanted to win it. And the more he took it upon himself with the ball at his feet to keep the ball and to try and win the game. Which is admirable. But sometimes passing is a better option. Just I'm just throwing it out there. But they have been reliant on just him, and I think that's why it's important now. They have got good players in yeah. now. They've got in Traore, they've got mm. in Watkins, they've got in Barkley, McGinn's back fit. They've got more options now, and I think as the season goes on, I think he'll realise that. You've got to remember, Aston Villa were a side that relied very heavily on Jack Grealish. But I think the Barclay and McGinn back now is massive for them. And Louise is playing well as well, by the way, yeah. isn't he? Can Villa do a Leicester is the question. They can. Anybody can win the title. You know, will they is a different question to can they. So if they are going to do a Leicester, Aston Villa, what do they have to do to make that happen? What do they need 
if they are going to make that happen. Because let's face it, Liverpool don't have Van Dijk. I don't think defensively we're totally sure about Manchester City. You talked about them being vulnerable earlier. If you look at other contenders, Arsenal are getting better, but they've not got that much better. Spurs, well, you know what they did yesterday. There's a Spursiness still about them. Who else is it a contender? Chelsea, with all the money they've spent, but they're still ropey at the back. Yeah. If, if it's going to be a season well, where another Leicester... Season. If there's going to be a season where another Leicester happens, then this has got to be it. This is the one, isn't it? Well, yeah, if it does happen. There's some... There's some Weird football. We know fans in the ground. It's obviously having an effect this season. Well, it's, it's obvious, right? Yeah. You look at some of the games, some of the results. You can't predict anything. There's some teams down down there, like Brighton, playing some unbelievable football at times, but not getting the results they would want. Um, you've got Wolves. You've got Leeds, entertaining people. There's so many good teams, and there's going to be sh- surprises all season. And for Aston Villa. Great start for them. The improvement has been brilliant to see. Defensively, they've got a good shape about them. Mings and Contra have got a great partnership. Cash has been a great um, signing for mm-hmm. them. Uh, right back, targets back. So, defensively, they're looking pretty good. In midfield, we, I think we all agree that's a decent midfield. Even the guys have got on the bench who could come on in midfield are pretty good. So, they've got good back up there. I still think the one area is up front at this moment in time where they've got to score goals. And I'm not so sure they will score enough to keep a challenge throughout the season. What do you think? 0871722344. Can Villa do a Leicester? Will they do a Leicester? Chelsea fan wants to uh, talk about Villa. Can they do a Leicester? Hi, Mark. How you doing, mate? How you doing, guys? Yeah, we're good, mate. Very good, thanks. Yeah, I'd say it's highly unlikely, but never say never. I mean, if you look at uh, how everybody seems to have upped their game in the first, I don't know, sort of four games of the season so far, so you're talking about Aston Villa, if you look at Brighton, they should have effectively beaten us, uh, and they should have beaten United as well. They'd be on ten points. Mm-hmm. So, you, so you just don't know, do you? It's just, uh, it all depends on uh, getting the rub of the green. Um, it just seems to be a lot, lot closer, but it just seems highly unlikely. It'd be nice if they could do it, or, uh, I don't know, everybody outside the top six, but it just seems a bit unlikely, doesn't it? But everybody seems to have stepped up their game they seem to have learned from the past few seasons. They made Do the- I, hang on, whoa, whoa. So you're a Chelsea fan. Let's talk about them because you obviously know about them. When you say stepped yeah. up their game, I mean, yes, going forward, fantastic. But as we saw, and I was there on Saturday, privileged to be there, of course. Um, defensively, still an absolute nightmare for Chelsea that Frank Lampard hasn't yet solved. So have they all yeah. stepped up their game, really? Well it's, it, well, it's hard to tell after four games, though, isn't it? But they seem to be doing something... I mean, if you look at Brighton hitting the post, what, five times against Man United, they should have absolutely smashed them out of the ballpark. And it's just it's, those, those things here and there makes a difference. Mate. So, yes, I know. I agree, I agree with you. I agree with you. I think Southampton have been good this season. I think Brighton have been good this season. I think Leeds have been amazing. West Ham, you look at West Ham after that first game this season, the panic button mm. was on a lot of broadcasters one they're saying about West Ham, they're going to get relegated. The fans were coming on here yeah. saying how bad it was. Look how they've played. The last few games, coming back from that against Tottenham the other day, there's really, the only ones who have been disappointed in this season, as I mean disappointed, is Sheffield United, West Brom, Fulham and Burnley. Yeah, 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 exactly. So uh, There's a lot of teams up there who can give anybody a, 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 a good game on their day, so you just don't know. So I wouldn't say no, it's a possibility, but there just seems to be a, a, a lot more quality uh, I know, amongst the teams at the moment, a lot more strength in depth as well. Uh, interesting, Mark. I mean, listen, uh, I, I'm going to say something about Brighton in a second, but you, you're talking about all those teams and West Ham and, and Brighton, blah, blah, blah. Aston Villa have played for 1-4, 12 points. They are actually reflecting how they're playing with the points. Brighton have got four points from five games. People are talking about Tarek Lamptey being brilliant. and Yeah, he was for about 45 minutes in a game, and now I'm still I'm, I'm watching him and he's not bad, but defensively I think there's a few questions to be answered. With Brighton, they're obviously not getting the results, so something's going wrong. Or is that just a blip until the results come? You know, I, I'm, I'm looking at it thinking, hang on. I, I watched them yesterday against uh, Palace, mm. Brighton, and they could have been there all night, okay? And then eventually... They get an equaliser. Oh, they missed some chances. Yeah, uh, they Lallana, did, but that's the point. Lallana, great dummy. Um, should have been a goal there. Um, so they had the chances to create and challenge, not putting the ball in the back of the net. I, I agree, but the play, what I'm trying to say is but, is, but the way they play Brighton, they're going to upset some big teams this season. I think they will. Southampton have proved already they will do. 
So I just think there's some fantastic teams out there and there's going to be, it's so hard to pick the results with no fans in the ground. I, That's what makes I, this season so special. Don't disagree with that, but in four games, Villa have conceded two goals. They've been brilliant. Right, so two goals, and that was in a game where they scored seven. So in three of these games, they've kept clean sheets. Are people not looking at what's going on? There's a reason why this is happening. Now, I don't know if Aston Villa are going to go on and win the title. But I think when Leicester did it, everybody else around them was down a couple of levels. I get that. And Leicester took advantage and were worthy champions. But you can't tell me that was the best version of Man City or Arsenal or Spurs or Chelsea or Man United that we've ever seen. It clearly wasn't. So this season, somebody somewhere has to be brilliant. Is it going to be Man City with their defensive problems? Is it going to be Arsenal with the Arteta revolution? Is it going to be Liverpool without Van Dijk and for a period without Alisson as well? As I was just say, now is the time. And Aston Villa are not just winning nah. games, they're scoring goals and not conceding. That's quite a good formula. Well, I'm putting it out there, I, it's still going to be Liverpool or City that win the title. So Manchester City, even though they do look vulnerable, on the break, I, th I think they're doing, I think people are working them out, other teams now, Right. I still think they're the most capable to go on a run with the players they've got where they go and beat and, and score loads of goals and defensively keep it tight, even though they have been vulnerable this start of this season and against the better teams we've seen in the Champions League. They are still the most likely now that are left to go on an unbelievable run. OK, so and I, I think when with the signing of Diaz, I think that has shored them. He looks really good, by the yes. way. So I think that that's impressive. And it may be the team that defends the best is most likely to win the Premier League. Um, we'll, we'll, we'll see, but Aston Villa are doing pretty well in that department so far. A couple of quick tweets here. Uh, first one, Chris says, uh, have you just claimed that Grealish is holding Villa back? If you listen in detail to what I said about him holding on the ball, holding on to the ball for too long, dribbling it for too long, taking 12 touches when a pass was better, then yes, in that respect, he's holding Villa back because there were two instances I gave examples of, if you'd listened, where Villa, I thought, could have scored a goal, should have scored a goal, but he held onto the ball for far too long. So yeah, in that respect, yeah, holding them back. Holding them back as a club or whatever? Of course not. Um, Ziggy says, uh, I think you're doing Villa... Listen to this, right? He says, I think you're doing Villa a huge injustice by saying, can they do a Leicester? When you look at the size of Villa and considering they're sixth... <laughs> Most the sixth most successful club in England in terms of honours won. Can, can you believe that he's actually spent the time not just typing that out, texting it? He spent money on a text for that. By doing a Leicester, I'm not talking about the size of the club, I'm talking about winning the title. When was the last time Aston Villa did that? Yes, 1981. They were after sacking the manager at the end of last season. There were. Quite a few Villa fans were up for that. It was very harsh. It's Drive on Talk Sport with Tool Station. Tools are more for any task.